If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. People, what was your first experience with the paranormal, supernatural, etc., that totally shocked you into believing? My brother passed away in a tragic motorcycle accident back in June, leaving three kids and a wife behind. He was always high energy and loved to play pranks on his siblings, nieces, and nephews. My family and I were in California, and everyone else was in Virginia. My daughter, four, was the first one to find out about it. She woke up screaming in the middle of the night and said, Daddy, uncle got hurt. I didn't think anything of it until my parents called me with the news that he had passed. For the next two to three weeks, there's been this uneasy feeling in all of our homes, and it started to feel normal again after that. Recently, my daughter has been saying things that don't make any sense, but when talking with my other brothers, their kids are saying the same things. Every night for the past week, my daughter has woken up screaming and crying, so we have our daughter sleep in our room because he is talking to her from the walls, saying come with me or come to me. Items in the house are starting to break, doors are getting slammed, dogs don't want to leave their crate, etc. Any idea what this could be? I don't imagine he would try to scare any of us. Could it be my late brother getting angry or something else in the house? This happened around the time I was 8 or 9, sleeping over at a friend's. Her house was two stories, with a large game room right at the top of the stairs. We were sleeping on a long couch. Our heads were on either side, so if I extended my leg, I'd touch her feet. It was around 3 or 4 am when I woke up to her getting off the couch. She is about halfway down the stairs when I walk to the top of the stairs and ask her what she's up to. She says, I'm getting us some snacks. It was not unusual, as we like to get up to watch scary stuff and eat food when her mom went to bed. I turn on the TV and walk downstairs to the kitchen to help. She's not there. I call her name and check to see if she's in the bathroom, she's not. I thought maybe she went back upstairs, and I didn't hear her footsteps. I decide to lay back down on the couch and wait for her, as I didn't see her on the couch, downstairs, or upstairs. I lay down on the couch, waiting, and I roll over to my side. My foot brushes something warm, and I extend my leg to see what it is. It's her foot. I sit up, confused as to when she had gotten there and she was dead asleep. I asked her about it in the morning, and she ever so nonchalantly said, oh yeah, I don't know who she is, but she looks like me. I never slept over again. An unexplained event happened when I worked in Gettysburg at an antique shop. I have been working there for two summers, and the owners were closing up shop to move to a different location. The building had rumors of being haunted by the usual Civil War ghosts that draw in tourists. One day I go up to help pack things and move them to the new location when the one owner tells me to get something from the basement. I never liked going down there because it was always dark, dank, and had exposed foundation walls. To make matters worse, it was stuffed with old stuff and a wicker crate that was supposedly a viewing coffin for Victorian-era children. Anyway, as I was walking over to the basement stairs, I heard two thumps on what I thought was the bottom step. I looked down the stairway, mildly freaked out, and started to grab the handrail to begin my descent. Just then, I heard what sounded like someone running, almost charging, up the stairs at me. I got so freaked out that I jumped back and ran to the front of the store, where the owner was, and told him what had happened. He just looked at me with kind of a smirk and said, oh yeah, that happens sometimes. They didn't tell you about the basement when you started. When I was about 7 or 8 years old, my family moved into an apartment. This place was so crazy and haunted that it still makes me feel sick to my stomach, 22 years later. Almost immediately after we moved in, I started to sleepwalk all the time. I would always wake up at the top of the stairs. No one else would be awake, but I could hear what sounded like two people quietly having a conversation in our kitchen. And there was always this presence at the bottom of the stairs that I would feel. It terrified me. I had this feeling like it was trying to lower me down the stairs so it could get me but it was so dark that I never actually saw anything. Once I felt like I could move, I would run back into my room and hide, either under my own covers or in my sister's bed. In maybe mid-1999, my younger sister and I were in our parents' room watching Milan. The credits were playing, and we were jumping up and down on the bed, singing along. I suddenly caught movement by the door and looked over at what I can only describe as the most terrifying thing I have ever seen. There was a girl on the ceiling, looking back at me. I could only see her face, hair, and hands, but she was upside down and looking into the room from the hallway. The only way I could describe her appearance is like the girl from the Grudge movie, except there wasn't any sound coming from her. She was completely silent. Just looking at me and my sister. And at that moment, all I could do was scream. I screamed so loudly that my sister started screaming because I had startled her. 
I looked away and jumped off the bed. My dad came running in, yelling at us for being loud, and I was so confused. He had walked right under this creepy girl and hadn't noticed her. I tried to tell him what I saw, but she was gone. He didn't believe me, and neither did my mother, until she later saw the same girl while home alone. So when I was around six, my sister was born dead. About a year later, me and my stepbrother started seeing this baby-looking shadow hanging between a lamp and my wooden bunk. It was only a few months later that my stepbrother got up and saw it. He brushed it off and did not think it was there. The thing was that the wood shadow from the bed was over more to the right, and the lamp pole was too thin to be it. It also did not explain why the baby-looking shadow was hunched over. The lamp's top would look more like a dog cone. Later on, my brother saw it too. It was like a year until we stopped seeing it. I was working with my research team late one night when we realized that we needed to go grab something from our lab a couple buildings over. I drew the short straw, so I headed over to our lab at around 1 am. Now, I go to Virginia Tech, and our lab happens to be located on the exact floor of the building that the infamous shooting took place in. You know, the floor where 31 people were killed. I tried not to think about this as I went into the lab to get our missing equipment. I had eerie vibes the whole time, but I wasn't completely spooked until the door to the lab closed unexpectedly. I tried to turn the handle, but it wouldn't budge. As soon as I realized I was trapped and had that OSHT moment, the lights cut out. Frantically, I called the rest of my team for help on my phone. When I hung up, I felt a finger touch my lips in the, shh, hand gesture. I have never been more scared in my life. It felt like I was reliving someone hiding from the shooter in our small lab space. My team arrived a couple minutes later, and the door opened without issue. I must have looked insane to them because everything stopped a few moments before they entered the building, I made them live text me the entire time. I never went into Norris alone again, and I never went after 10 PM. I wonder which one of the victims was trying to keep me safe that night. Not my story, but my dad's friend. He used to be a sheriff for San Bernardino County back in the late 50s and early 60s, and one night he gets a call that there are some kids in an old abandoned house messing around, turning the lights on, and making a racket. So he and his partner go out to the house, and sure enough, there are lights on in the house. So he and his partner go inside and search the whole house and the perimeter and find nobody. So they go back inside, turn off the lights, and head back to their car. They get in the car and look up at the house, and a light turns back on upstairs. So they go in the house again and can't find anyone. So they turn off the lights, go back to their car, and then the same light turns on again, and they see a shadow of a person passing by the window. So now they're pissed and run back into the house, guns drawn, yelling that they're the police and still can't find anyone. So they go back out to the car and radio to dispatch to call the utility company and have them cut power to the house. After a few minutes of waiting, the dispatcher radios them back and says that the utility company cut power to the house a few years ago after the couple who lived there died. At that point, both of the officers got a chill and just hopped back in their cars and left. Myself and my grandfather liked going out along trails and fields to just watch the deer, they like hanging out in the fields. So we grabbed a pair of binoculars and set out. Eventually, we stop in a field, and we can see a few deer hanging out by the tree line. So we pulled out the binoculars and just looked at them. So as we're watching this doe, its head snaps over as if it noticed something, and then it bolts into the trees. After I lose sight, my grandfather pats me on the shoulder to get my attention and then whispers that there's a bear in the field. So as I lower the binoculars, he's pointing at this black shape roughly in the middle of the field. I took a quick look with the binoculars, but all I could make out was this pitch black shape that looked kind of weird. So we slowly start moving away, we don't want to get involved with a bear. As we start moving further, a good 50 to 100 meters away from where we were, we see this thing stand up, and it's just as you described, the sucker was tall, lanky, had thin, long arms, and was pitch black. I tried to take a look with the binoculars, but my grandfather just wanted to get the heck out of there. So he grabs my arm, and we start moving quicker. I saw this thing take off into the trees, and there was no mistaking that thing for a bear. The arms were just too long, and the thing was too thin on the bottom. That night I had dreams of this black thing crouching up in trees and chasing me down, but that's a dream. This story did frighten me as an investigator. It sounds to me like a Wendigo. I had always believed in it but never saw anything. Until I was 12. I was lying in my room, I have two dormers and a window in it, and I had my bed facing the far wall. I was putting up planets in my room and didn't have glue at the time, so I taped them up. I woke up at about 2 o'clock in the morning and looked at the foot of my bed. I felt like my eyes were drawn to the foot. 
and floating at the end of my bed was a bluish, slightly transparent figure. He had burlap cut shorts, a white wife beater on, and a noose cut and was floating above. With his head around his neck, he had big, black, empty sockets where his eyes should have been. He was the blue and transparent version of the old Game Boy Advance, and his body figure looked like the blue guy from Nightmare Before Christmas. I remember sitting there thinking, what is this? And I said as calmly as I could, whoever you are, please leave me alone, and when I turned away, he had knocked Saturn, the planet picture, down. When I woke up at 8 o'clock, it was on the floor. To give context, this was on the night after Easter. The next year, my cousin hanged herself. The same night. I think he was a warning or something, but I have a definite idea and feel that he is still here. He just doesn't show himself as much, he just makes noises. When I was 10, we moved into a house that was built in the 1940s. We lived there for 5 years. I loved that house after my mom renovated it. But she didn't renovate the basement or the sun room. I left it all original. Both creeped me out. They just didn't feel right. So I avoided both. Until I started 7th grade. That's when my mom let me go to school and come home alone. To go to my bus stop, she told me I should go through the back door, which is through the sun room. The sun room is attached to the kitchen by a door with a window on top. One day, I was standing in the kitchen, ready to leave for school. I looked out the door through the sun room, and there was a guy standing there. All black, had an odd hat on. I still remember it vividly. I ran back to my bedroom, called my mom, and she just said, okay, you can stay home. This was two or three years ago. Me and a couple of friends were joyriding in my friend's new car through a popular wooded area or park in our area. It was about 11.37 pm, and we were on one of the more secluded roads in the entire park. So, we were driving along, and I just happened to look up in the trees and see this strange, wavy blue light across the top of the trees. To better describe it, it looked sort of like there was a car behind us shining its headlights, but we were the only cars in the area, and if there was a car behind us, it would have had to have been flying behind us to get its headlights to reach the height at which I saw this creepy blue light. Immediately after seeing this light, I looked over to ask my friends if they saw the light, and my friend who was driving was looking at me in the most serious manner I've ever witnessed from him. I didn't even bother asking if he saw it, his expression said everything. In the next few seconds, everyone in the car started feeling ridiculously noxious, and I had this horrible feeling of anxiety creep over my body. My friend in the back seat, who didn't even see the light, almost puked. So, not too great a story. But I firmly believe there is some weird stuff going on in those woods. To this day, I will not drive in those woods after dark. My mom grew up in a small town in Mexico where everyone pretty much knows each other. I believe the population was around 350 at the time, the 1980s. Around the time of the events, she was 10 years old. I don't know if it runs in the family, but at some point in our lives, every single member of my family has experienced something paranormal. Well, here are some of my mom's stories that I think are worth telling. She lived in a small adobe house. It was a super small home for the five of them, my grandparents, my uncle, my aunt, and my mom. The kitchen was located on the front part of the house, and the rooms were on the back. There was a wall that divided the kitchen from the rest of the house, and to get to either, there was a door inside the house, kind of like how some hotel rooms have a door to get to the other room. Well, that was their house. They also had a window in one of the rooms, so they could see the kitchen. The kids would sleep in one room and my grandparents in the other one. Where my mom and my aunt and uncle would sleep was the room with a window. My mom tells me that at night they would hear the chairs from the kitchen being dragged, and all the things on the table would get smacked off the table. On one occasion, the noises were so loud that they woke her and her siblings up. They were curious, and although they knew what was making the noise, they looked through the window and saw a small shadow dragging a chair across the room. She said they ran to their parents' room and slept the night there, the noises went on all night, she recalls. They believed it was my great-great-grandma's dad who would mess around with them because he lived in that house before it was passed on to my grandma. Another time she said she awoke during the night and looked to the side of the bed, where she saw a big black dog with red eyes. She went under the blanket and didn't come out until the morning. She always believed she saw the devil in the shape of a dog. She also saw what looked like a monkey hanging and swinging from the door of her room. My house has had some weird stuff going on since I bought it. I found the hatch into the roof open a couple of times, knocking on the wall from unoccupied rooms, and two different housemates have experienced those things while I've been away. The most disconcerting has been a shadowy blob or figure that's been in my room a couple of times. One experience in particular scared the S out of me. I woke up at about 3am. 
The room was super dark, and there was a dark, shadowy mass right next to me. I thought it was my German shepherd standing on the bed right next to me. I think I assumed that she'd woken me up by jumping up on the bed and wanting a pat. So I reached out to pat her. My hand went into the shadow, and it was like putting your hand in freezing cold water. I then realized I was on the edge of the bed, my dog was sleeping on the other side of the bed. I had to sleep with a nightlight on for a week after that experience. It's appeared again, but on the far side of the room, but praying to Jesus has made it dissipate every time, and after that experience, I went around and prayed in every room, and it stopped for around a year, and then it seems to start up again when I've been away on a work trip for a few weeks. It's disconcerting when you wake up and see a shadowy mass on the far side of the room, and then it's even more disconcerting when you realize your dog on the bed down near your feet is also staring at the same shadowy mass. Okay, so I never really believed in supernatural stuff, but now I do. My cousin was overstaying, and we were really bored at night, so we thought it would be a good idea to seek out and go on our bikes. When we were out, we went to this park, which is located in the middle of a forest. Now that I look back, yeah, I know it was dumb, after sitting on the swing, we decided to leave, and we started cycling on a path to get out. In the middle of the forest, I stopped to take a break. When I looked up, I saw someone walk past some trees in the distance. It was now 3 o'clock, so I was a bit confused but didn't think much of it. Right as we were about to leave, I took out my phone to show my cousin a funny video. About halfway through, I started hearing this weird noise, but I didn't look for any reason, and I noticed my cousin wasn't looking at the video, so I looked up at him, and his face was so pale. He's normally really tan, I see him looking at where we saw the person and where the noise was coming from, and I look up to see this tall silhouette in the distance. It had four legs and was a really weird shape, it started leaping side to side, but so was how it was also moving towards us. It was still kind of far away, but getting closer really quickly, my cousin was frozen in fear, so I shouted at him, move, we need to get TF out of here. We both stared, cycling away, but it was following us until we got to the main road, where there was light. We went home, straight away, and agreed not to tell anyone as they wouldn't believe us, but I spoke to him again. My theory is that it was some sort of shape shifter, as we saw a normal person head in that direction before it came out. When I was little, I had this reoccurring experience every night that terrified me so much that I cried and slept in my mom's room every night it happened. This was my first encounter. I was laying in bed trying to go to sleep, and all of a sudden I got that feeling of fear in my stomach, and I didn't know why. I rolled over and looked around my room. I was surprised by a blue circle of light on my wall next to my door. The light was moving in a circle and making no sound sometimes and a low humming sound other times. This scared me because, even as a child, I knew that it was not normal. But it didn't stop there. After looking at it for a little bit, I saw what looked like four fingers come out from the bottom of the circle and grab over the circle's edge onto the wall, like someone's trying to pull themselves up. Then, a leg hung over the circle's edge. Then I watched as a second hand grabbed higher on the right side of the circle. I knew by now that this had to be a person. Then the person pulled themselves all the way through the wall and was now standing right in front of the circle. It looked like a very tall, skinny man. No, not a man. It was more like the silhouette of a man, with no detail able to be made out of him. I remember the sheer horror I felt as I watched him just stand there, facing me on the other side of the room. He didn't do anything, he just stood there and stared at me. I felt very bad, and I started to cry. I buried my head under my blankets and cried and screamed as loud as I could, and then I heard a flick and felt something grab me. It was my mom. She hugged me tight, and I explained everything about the shadow man, as I called him, and she didn't know what to make of it. I slept in her room that night. After that night, the same occurrence happened two or three more times in the next week. But the week after was non-stop. Every single night, it happened. I was scared to go into my room with the lights off because of it. After the week had gone by, Sunday came. By then, my mom was terribly worried and concerned that there was some sort of evil spirit in my room. So on Sunday, after church, my mom had one of our best family friends, who was also the pastor of our church, bless me and pray for the demons and evil spirits to leave me alone. When I was in my 20s, my husband and I were just starting out and needed to move in with a family member to save up some money for our own place. We moved in with my mother-in-law's boyfriend in his family home. It had been in his family since the 1800s, and many members of his family passed away there. We were staying in one of the older rooms, way off the main part of the house. Our room was old Victorian style and was pretty cool, if you ask me. Well, I am a very light sleeper and kept getting the feeling that someone or something was watching me in my sleep. I would wake up, look around, and see nothing but darkness. 
Until, one night I felt that feeling again of being watched, so I sat up really quickly and about passed out when I saw a tall, slender woman standing in the corner of our room, just staring at me. She had a dark dress on, with a brooch at the neckline of her dress, and her hair in a bun at the top of her head. I yelled and shook my husband awake, and by the time he woke up and sat up, she was gone. He told me that I was crazy and to go back to bed. The next night, I couldn't sleep a wink and kept tossing and turning in bed. I was anxious, fearful, and ready for anything. I rolled onto my stomach and threw my foot halfway off the bed, where it was just hanging there. All of a sudden, this great, strong force grabbed onto my foot and yanked me so hard that I almost came entirely off the bed. I screamed as loud as I could, waking up my husband and his mom's boyfriend, and I cried, telling them what happened. My husband was skeptical, but his mom's boyfriend believed me and said he has seen the lady too, but just ignores her because she's harmless. Well, obviously not, and needless to say, we moved out that week and never went back. The very first strange thing I remember was thinking I could fly. I would say that around toddlerhood, I have memories of getting up on the kitchen counter and then floating down. It happened often, like every time my mother wasn't paying attention, I was up on that counter and floating back down. I also remember being a little older, in a different house, and floating down the stairs. But only a couple of times, because by then I was questioning it and getting a little scared to take the chance. I've looked that up, and apparently it's a common memory people have. It made me feel confused, but I still am. The next thing I remember is being a young teenager living in a very old house, a couple hundred years old. My mother worked night shifts, and I was alone quite a bit. I could hear the sounds of partying going on in the basement, like music, laughter, and happy voices in the middle of the night. It didn't scare me necessarily, because it certainly didn't sound malevolent, but you can bet I never stepped foot in that basement, I don't even know what it looked like. I just stayed away from it. More things happened in that house, more ordinary spooky things, and at the time I was just a bit curious about it and had friends over as often as I could to keep me company and to experience things too. This was approximately in the year 2001. I was staying over at my girlfriend's home. Both her mom and her sister were away for the weekend. The home was situated right next to a creek at the end of a cul-de-sac. The prior resident of the home had passed away in the home. Additionally, the resident was an agoraphobe and hadn't left her home since Kennedy's assassination. This was believable, as the exposed wooden beams in the home were black from the number of cigarettes smoked throughout the years. At any rate, I'm a light sleeper. My girlfriend had assured me her mom would not be coming back. The windows in my girlfriend's bedroom did not open all the way. So, if anyone had come into the home, I'd have had to basically break her windows to escape, that didn't happen. Anyway, we're both asleep. I woke up to the sound of someone talking on the phone. I get my girlfriend awake, and I'm like, your mom is freaking home. I gotta hide. My girlfriend responds by saying there is no way her mom is home. I then say, well, who is that talking right now? We both sit there in fear, hearing the voice. It sounds as if it's coming from across the hallway, from her sister's room. My girlfriend then forces me to go and investigate. All I could think was, yeah, ducking right. But I got up and investigated. As soon as I opened the door to the hallway, the voice stopped. I don't exactly remember what it was saying. However, I do remember the content of the conversation regarding how sad she was that Kennedy had passed. I never enjoyed staying over at her place after that. She actually does not live in that home because of the ghost. This morning, I was in my bathroom. The window overlooks my backyard, and I had the window open. I kept hearing somebody outside call my dog's name. They kept saying Monty, calling out as if to get him inside. When I listened closer, the voice sounded exactly like mine, same tone, same depth. It sounded as if it were coming from my own backyard, or perhaps a neighboring yard. I looked outside and saw nothing, no movement, no person, no dogs. I got a chill, and after a minute, the calling stopped. I figured maybe it was my mother. Although the voice sounded identical to mine, when something scary happens, you try to rationalize it, you know. So I made my way downstairs and past my mother's room, where she was still getting ready for the day. I asked her if she had let the dogs outside. She told me she hadn't been downstairs yet. When I went downstairs, Monty and my sister's dog, Ruby, were both laying on the sofa, exactly where I had left them when I went to the bathroom. I know it sounds insane, and I do. But I also know what I heard. I heard my own voice calling out to my dog, as if trying to get him inside, which is a regular occurrence. I don't know if this is paranormal, a glitch in the matrix, or something else. But I'm still rattled about it. Last night, at exactly 3.38am, 
I woke up with the quietest scream I've ever produced. I didn't even think I was capable of screaming so quietly. As soon as my eyes opened, I saw this as an almost ball of black static floating over my husband. And as soon as he woke up from my screaming, it dissipated. He asked me what was wrong, and I couldn't even get words to form. All I muttered was flies because it sounded like a huge swarm above him. He rolled over and went back to sleep. When I woke up this morning, I remembered what I saw, and it definitely wasn't flies. I usually have very lucid dreams, and I'm able to identify pretty well what's a dream and what's reality. I am also really good at remembering dreams. Last night, I don't remember anything except this ball of black static floating over my husband, and it really freaks me out. I've never seen or heard of anything like this. If anyone has an explanation or can tell me if this entity was good or bad, I'd really appreciate it. I don't feel anything sinister in my home, but this was just too scary. Not mine, but my father's, who doesn't embellish, he's in high school in the late 60s or early 70s. One night, he and a couple buddies were having fun riding in one of their muscle cars. It's rural Iowa late at night. Way out in the country is a 100 cottonwood and a gravel intersection. It's a cool minor attraction. A mile south of there, on the other side of I-80, is a small, old cemetery. The Old Highland Cemetery. It was with an abandoned one-room church, which has been gone now for decades. The last preacher of the church had hung, hanged? Himself. Rumor says with barbed wire. My dad and his friends made their way out there late one night. They stopped and got out. However, quickly, his friends jumped back into the car and drove off. They abandoned him, jokingly. My dad says he was a bit spooked and realized his friends had pranked him. There's enough moonlight to see, but not quite a full moon. He starts walking down the gravel road in his buddy's direction. He gets maybe a hundred feet down the road and realizes he hears someone walking behind him, maybe thirty feet back. He stops, somewhat alarmed, and looks behind him. Nobody's there, and the sound stops. He second guesses himself and continues walking down the gravel. He hears his own footsteps, and then again, he hears another set of footsteps behind him. It's in step, but now it's sounding twenty feet behind. He's pretty freaked out, but he's keeping his composure. After several steps, he stops looks behind him. But nothing. Starts walking again. Just his own steps for several steps. Then it's back again, now maybe 10 feet behind. He keeps walking, frightened but straining for composure. Fear took over, and he started sprinting for a bit, then turned 90 degrees right and dove into the tall grass in the ditch. He's sunk as deep as he can to hide. He peers up to be eye level with the road. Listening. Crunch, 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 crunch as he watches two old black leather shoes go walking on the gravel just a few feet in front of him. His friends eventually came back for him. I live in the US but have family in central Mexico. Many of the women on that side of my family claim to be sensitive. The house is sort of broken up to the point where almost each room is its own building, so to get from room to room, you walk out into the central outside area where you can also access the carport on one side and the backyard on the opposite. When I was younger, at nights, one of my girl cousins would refuse to go anywhere near the backyard and would start tearing up if she ever looked that way, sometimes claiming that someone was there. I've heard my aunt has seen the apparition of a soldier walking back there, but supposedly there are one or two more that occasionally appear. A lot of my family is really scared of them, but they still seem pretty content to keep to one side of the central area after dark. Now that I've had my own experience almost two decades later, it makes me look back on it in a different way. It's been a long time since I've been back, but if and when I do, I'll see what more I uncover. Back in 2011, my dad and stepmom bought an old house from the 1830s in upstate NY. I was 14 at the time, and my sister and I would stay there every other weekend. Some nights, I would get really freaked out because I would hear weird noises or, believe it or not, see shadowy figures standing right by my bed. It's an old house, so you can't be surprised if there are spirits there. I tried telling my dad about it, but he didn't believe me. My stepmom, on the other hand, was interested. She's mentioned a few times in the past that she had a friend who was a medium, and she's legit. My dad, again, didn't believe her. So she invited her over one day just to hang out. They were in the yard, setting up for a barbecue and drinking beer, when suddenly, her friend looked over at the house and said, someone's here. My stepmom asked her, what do you see? She said, there's a little girl in a black dress. She's talking about a well. She's saying, come see the well over and over again. And then she just disappeared. My dad thought she was just drunk or trying to pull his leg. Until one year later. 
my dad has been rebuilding this house piece by piece since he bought it. Today, in 2022, it's completely rebuilt, when you walk through the front door, you see a small room with a door that leads to the kitchen. I guess you could call it an indoor front porch. It has another door on the left side that leads to the garage. His next project was to rebuild this room. He ripped off the walls, built with old, worn out wood, and tore up the floorboards. When he tore up the floorboards, his heart stopped. He couldn't believe what he saw under the house. Oh well. We never knew what happened to the little girl that was seen. She wasn't in the well, like in the ring. She was just trying to lead them to it. I assume she's buried somewhere on the property, and if so, they have no interest in disturbing her. My dad is now a believer. My college friend said he was in a group backpacking the Idaho Sawtooth Mountains, and they all heard this metallic sound of what sounded like machinery, but like nothing he has ever heard, something akin to this noise reverberated throughout the forest. Mind you, they were well over 75 miles away from the trailhead and probably 100 miles away from a highway. He also said all the nature noises you'd expect to hear had died out beforehand. This is one of the most remote parks in the lower 48. I have another friend who was solo backpacking in the Black Hills of South Dakota and was resting in his tent for the night when, around 10 p.m., there was what sounded like a sonic boom that went off directly above him, accompanied by a ridiculous burst of strong wind that blew over dead tree branches around him. He was on a wilderness site, well away from any roads or towns. Finally, two other college friends of mine were going to climb up a well-known 14er in Colorado in the dead of winter, I believe. They were the only ones at this parking lot for the trailhead to this mountain, and for good reason. There was a decent amount of snow on the ground, and the weather was volatile. I still think they had to have cabin fever to go and attempt a summit of this peak with the weather the way it was. Anyway, they literally almost died in a snowstorm, an amazing tale, and had to emergency camp at a lower elevation. The wind had died down late at night, but the snow kept falling silently. They both started hearing what sounded like walkie-talkie metallic noise circling their tent, and then what sounded like two voices that can only be described as samurai chattering noise coming from two different locations near the tent. My one friend yelled out, and the voices stopped for a short while and then picked up again. My other friend then yelled out, who's there? And no response. Finally, the noise died down. In the morning, they woke up to well over two feet of snow and no signs of footprints or a path where a person could have trudged. They eventually hiked back to their vehicle and saw that they were the only ones in the parking lot, the same as when they left it. When I was little, three to four, I lived in a flat in West Dalwich, London. My parents absolutely hated the place for one reason, me. Late at night, I would wake up to tell my parents about the man in the corner. At first, they believed that it was my imagination running wild, but it soon became a routine thing. I would wake up my parents because the man in the corner told me to. I am from Hungary, so at this point in time, I didn't speak English, but I understood everything the man said. Another story from the same flat was that I wasn't very good friends with the hallway people. I asked my mom if I could go to the hallway. My mom obviously agreed because it was a harmless request. As I was heading to the hallway, I said to my mom that I couldn't go down the hallway because there were too many people. Jumping back to the present time in 2020, when I was around 12, my mom had found a new obsession with collecting authentic Victorian sideboards and furniture. We had just moved into this beautiful bungalow west of Norway. Both me and my sister thought it was off, especially in the dining room, where my mom put all of the stuff I thought was haunted. I was bored, so my sister and I did the Ouija board in the room. All I remember is getting the name Jane out of it, as well as lots of sightings of this Jane character and more. We have moved since then, with all the same furniture and seeing all the same stuff, but I have come to accept that as long as I live with my mother, it won't stop. I had believed in ghosts prior to this, but I also didn't attribute every little bump to a ghost. I always tried to find the logical explanation for things. Even when someone I knew would describe their paranormal experiences, I thought maybe there was something else making these shadows or noises, and I would take their experience with a grain of salt. But after having lived in a haunted house, I'm a lot more open to people's paranormal stories. I moved into one of the houses on my father's lot. I just had a baby, and me and my husband moved in. I had put up a mirror with a metal hook that hung over the closet door, which faced the bed. Every time we opened the closet door, it made a loud screeching sound because the metal hook rubbed against the frame. About a week after moving in, it's the middle of the night, and I'm asleep in the room by myself because my husband was working nights at the time. The baby was in a bassinet next to me, and two chihuahuas were at the foot of the bed on the floor. I hear the sound of the closet door opening, and the screeching it makes, because of the mirror hanging over the door, wakes me up. I look at the door and see the dogs at the foot of the bed, 
awake and staring at the door. Hmm, maybe they opened it by putting their little paw under it? It's rather hard to open it with the metal hook over the door, the wood is a little swollen, and add to that, there's carpet, but that's the logical conclusion to me, so I go back to sleep. This happens a few more times throughout the next few weeks. Around the fifth time this happened, I again heard the closet door open. I sit up and look at the dogs, which are still at the foot of the bed. They were never by the closet door any of the times this happened. Then I see the closet door slowly start to open by itself. Scary creaking noise and everything. The dogs. Go. Wild. They are barking ferociously at the closet door. My one dog, Bear, has his fur straight up and ears pointing back, barking away. My other dog, Joe Joe, starts whimpering and crying and runs under the bed. Oh hell no. This dog is scared of nothing. He would try to square up with St. Bernard's and Great Danes, and he's crying and running under the bed? Their reaction was when I knew my place was haunted. Over the next few years, we had a lot of experiences there. I hated it there, and I don't think the entity was a good one. We no longer live there, and I'm glad. My sister and I were getting ready to go out one day. I was doing my makeup in front of a large mirror, and in my peripheral vision, I saw her come into the room and stand in the background, watching me get ready. After about 30 seconds, I asked her, are you ready? But she didn't reply. I was still looking at myself, but I could see that she hadn't moved. I repeated the question and still received no response. Finally, I asked, what are you doing? Why won't you answer me? And turned to face her. As I looked towards her in the mirror, I saw an unfamiliar woman standing there who looked nothing like my sister. By the time I finished turning around, she was gone, and the room was empty. There's no way I imagined it. I had seen her walk in, she stayed there for about two minutes, and I saw her very clearly as I turned. The fact that I actually talked to her says it all. A few months later, my great-grandma and great-aunt, who lived there, both separately described the same woman watching them in other parts of the house. I only told my mom, not them, so she was as shocked as I was when they talked about it. None of us had ever believed in the paranormal, and none of us had ever told ghost stories. I am a heavy skeptic. I don't believe orbs are real, nor do I search for vague faces in photos or think cemeteries are scary. I chalk most anything up to some logical explanation. This happened about a decade ago. I was 18 at the time. I was dating a boy for about a month, we'll call him B. B was also completely dismissive of the idea that ghosts are real. Even more dismissive than I was. He thought the ideas of religion, spirits, aliens, etc. were all bizarre fantasies. About a month into our relationship, he decided it was time I met his parents. I, being a gothic teen, was extremely nervous, but I reluctantly agreed. He picked me up and drove us to his apartment to meet them. Upon walking through the front door, his mother sat on the couch with her two dogs, chihuahuas, one brown and one black, to the left of me, and his father stood in the kitchen entryway to the right of me. He introduced me, and we made pleasant small talk. I was so focused on the conversation and my nerves that I hardly noticed the dogs barking until his mother yelled quiet. To stop them. We chatted for about 20 minutes, then headed out for our weekend plans. About a week later, he invited me over again. His parents weren't home, and upon arriving, I noticed only one dog was there. The dog was less timid this time, so I bent down to pet her. B told me her name and a bit of her history, how they adopted her, etc. I then asked him about the black dog, and he got a puzzled look on his face. B, what black dog? Me, the one that was here last time? It looks just like this one, only it's black. B, Belle was the only dog here. He looked at me in pure disbelief and told me they'd had a dog just like that, but it died a few months ago. I told him the dog had a white stripe down its chest and a blue collar with a bow on it, and his jaw hit the floor. He led me down the hallway and showed me a photo on the wall of the two dogs together, and my description perfectly matched it. A photo that could not be seen from the front door where I had stood during my entire last visit. We tried for a solid hour to make this make sense. I couldn't have gotten every single detail right, down to the collar. It wasn't something I saw from the corner of my eye, I stared right at this dog for 20 solid minutes. It was hardly 5 feet away from me, coming up occasionally to sniff my shoes and barking as any dog would at a newcomer. I undoubtedly saw this dog. To this day, I can see the scene in my mind very clearly. I don't have any history of mental illness or hallucinations. I've never experienced anything like this, there was nothing strange about its appearance. It wasn't clear, floating, or any of that. It looked just like any dog. Except, somehow, it wasn't there, and nobody saw it but me. During our relationship, 
we would often recall that experience and how strange it was. Ten years later, and I still rack my brain trying to make it make sense. It just doesn't. Have any of you ever seen ghost animals? Or had an experience like this? I have questioned my sanity for a decade because of this experience. It was about 12 at night, and my best friend and I decided to go to the cemetery just for fun. That night there was a full moon, so it was lit up pretty well, we didn't have any flashlights or anything. We went in, and it was completely silent at first, which creeped me out, but I ignored it. We walked for a bit, and we were about to come to a point where the road separated into two ways, and right where the road splits, there's a tree. As we got closer, we saw this thing jump out from behind the tree, it was human-shaped but inhumanly tall, and it ran in the opposite direction. We ran so fast the other way until we couldn't run anymore. As we were reaching the exit, we both literally saw just legs running, we couldn't see the upper body, all we saw were legs. We were so confused that we kind of just stood and watched it once. As we realized we were just standing there, we booked it until we made it back to my house. We never entered the cemetery again after that. The first one could have been just a person, I'm not sure, but the second one was the one that really confused me. It was Thanksgiving 2006. We had dinner with the family. I was 12 years old. I got mad at my mom because I wanted to go to the mall for Black Friday with her and my aunt, but she said no, so I left for my room. Me and my little sister shared a room. The room was small, and we had a bunk bed, those metal bunk beds that make a hella noise when you move and turn. Well, I was watching Chicken Little, it was probably 12 AM once the movie finished, I turned off the light and tried to go to sleep. I was lying down facing the wall, trying to go to sleep, when the bed started creaking like somebody had laid down someone really heavy. I turned around, and the empty side of the mattress was sinking down like someone was laying down. I freaked out, but I couldn't move. I tried to scream, but I couldn't. I was so scared. I started to cry. I closed my eyes really tight, and I let the loudest scream out. My little sister and cousin came into the room and turned the light on. My sister hugged me, and then I told them what happened. When they turned the light on, you could see the bed sheets all messed up, like someone was lying there. That was definitely one experience that stuck with me. Throughout my life, I've had experiences with the paranormal, usually just seeing shadows and hearing steps or someone trying to open the doors. Back in Mexico, my aunt and uncle, my mom's siblings, stayed over at our home when they came to visit from here, US, to Mexico. On one occasion, my aunt told my sister that if she didn't behave, La Mano Peluda, the hairy hand, would come and get her. She freaked my sister out so much. At night, we had two beds in one room. I shared a bed with mom and my aunt and sister shared a bed. At night, my aunt was awoken by tapping. She said she woke up and heard tapping. Following were three knocks on our room's door. She believed that it happened to her because she was trying to scare my sister. I go to a university in Asheville, North Carolina, and in my freshman year here, I went camping a couple of times with some close friends. We always went to the same campsite by the French Broad River, it was pretty cheap and tucked away in the trees. This particular mid-November camping trip was like the first couple. We loaded up on supplies and piled into my friend Jacob's truck to go to the campsite. We set up our tent sometime around dusk, ate food and messed around for a while, and finally went to bed after midnight. I woke up sometime before dawn, and I had to pee. I bundled up in a second sweater, because late fall nights can get very chilly here, and went outside to do my business. When I say that our campsite was right next to the river, I mean it was right next to the river less than 20 feet from the edge of the water. So I decided to pop a squat behind a tree on the riverbank and look at the water while I took a whiz. I was still pretty drowsy at that point, and the cold wasn't doing much to wake me up. I was just gazing out at the river, eyes almost glazed over, when I spotted something. A figure was standing in the middle of the freezing cold French Broad River at 3 in the ducking morning. I'm pretty sure my peace stream retracted back up into me. The moonlight was fairly bright, but I knew that sleepy eyes can play tricks on you. I squinted my eyes, widened them as far as they could go, shielded them, and did everything else. It was definitely a person about halfway across the river, standing waist deep in the running water. I couldn't tell in the dark, but I'm sure it was facing our camp. I don't know what gender it was, but the moonlight that reflected off it was pale enough to make me think it wasn't wearing any clothes. Once my brain was fully awake and processing the person staring at me from the freezing river, I hiked my pants up and proceeded to wake up my friends and tell them what I had just seen. We all looked out of the tent, and sure enough, river person is still standing there, completely ducking still. We huddled back in the tent to figure out what we were going to do, and eventually we packed up our shit and left before sunrise. River person was there and watching us do it the whole time. 
Spooky. So I'm not a full believer and I'm still skeptical, but boy, I will never forget that thing from 2008. So back in 2008, I was 13 and on summer vacation. At that time, we finally had decent internet, found anime online, and got hooked. I knew about anime beforehand but never about websites to watch them since we had ass internet beforehand. Anyway, my older brother worked in a lodge up in the mountains and would leave at 2 p.m. and be home by 3 a.m. since he had a 2 to 3 hour commute and worked as a busboy in the restaurant at the lodge. He would always bring things like snacks, drinks, and food made in the restaurant, and since it was summer vacation, I'd wait for him to see what he'd bring. So I would watch the Summer Olympics and then go watch some anime in the night with the laptop he owned since he let me use it. My father is a field worker and generally leaves to work around 5 to 6 a.m., depending on where he works since it's all seasonal. My mother is generally awake around 4 to 5 a.m. to make his lunch, so it wasn't unusual to hear them awake in the middle of the night. So it was around 3 a.m. and I was lying on my bed with the laptop on my chest, so I couldn't see the door clearly since the laptop screen covers that spot, and the door was directly in front of me since my bed was on that side of the room and my brother's bed was on the other side of the room. I heard my mother turn on the hallway lights and use the restroom, and I thought nothing much of it was right, so a few minutes go by and I hear my door opening slowly, and I assumed it was my mother, so I asked her what's up, but she gave no reply, so I lowered the screen and looked at the door, and that's when I saw it. A very tall woman was staring at me, her head was sideways as her neck reached the ceiling, and her hair had reached the door knob. I could see her holding the door, and I just lay there frozen, unable to do anything. Not sure how much time passed, but she slowly left and closed the door and then noticed the hallway light still on since this figure effectively blocked it. I lay there for a few minutes before finally grabbing my flashlight and my switchblade, completely scared until my brother came home. Shit scared the duck out of me, so my parents are believers in the paranormal and they believed it was the evil spirit of the women who had almost kidnapped me when I was smaller. My dad said the witch doctor he visits told him it was and that my three experiences were most likely hers. It still scares me to this day to think about it. About 10 years ago, when I was in my early teens, I experienced my first and, so far, only paranormal experience. During the summer when this happened, I was visiting my father in Hungary with my two sisters. The night this happened was just like any other night. My grandmother was staying over, and between her, my father, and my sisters, all three bedrooms were taken, leaving me to sleep on the sofa in the living room. My sisters and I had just gotten back from a late night of hanging out with some friends and decided to get ready for bed immediately since we were all very tired. As I got into bed for the night, my sisters continued talking quietly in their room with the door open and the lights from their bedroom on. My father and grandmother were asleep. My father's house wasn't creepy by any means, but the one unnerving thing about sleeping in the living room in the dark was the fact that all three doors leading into it had a large panel of frosted, wrinkled glass on the top half, allowing you to see fuzzy shapes or figures of people on the other side of the door. This made what I saw all the more mysterious and, at the time, terrifying. Still wide awake, I looked up through the glass of one of the doors and, looking as clear as anything I'd ever seen, saw a hooded figure staring right at me. Gray and featureless, it was standing on the other side of the door and perfectly backlit by the light streaming out of my sister's room. I immediately froze, unable to take my eyes off of it. The figure was clearly watching me, although it didn't have any eyes or a face that I could see. Any defining features were obscured by some type of hood or shawl it wore over its head and shoulders. As I lay there frozen in fear, my mind quickly eliminated all of the possibilities of this thing being a human. Both my grandmother and my father were asleep, and my sisters were still talking in their bedroom. Not to mention, why would any of my family just stand there looking at me without moving in the dead of night? After some time, I finally plucked up the courage to call out to one of my sisters to come, unsure of what else to do. She told me she'd be there soon, leaving me staring at this figure for another terrifying period. Then, just seconds before she was about to step out of her room and through the very same door the figure was standing behind. It glided away out of sight, and my sister walked through as if nothing had happened. For me, this was the nail in the coffin that I witnessed some type of spirit, ghost, or guardian angel that night. The way in which it glided away on the other side of the glass was so unhuman like in its movement, and I know that what I saw that night was something paranormal. Around four or five years ago, I encountered a very unusual experience. So I used to live at my sister's house in England. I'd sleep with my nephew, who was only nine. So that one night he slept with his mom, and I had the bed all to myself. So I went to sleep and suddenly woke up at, like, 3 a.m. The reason I woke up was because my left arm got grabbed really hard. So I thought it was my nephew wanting to go to the toilet but was scared, but when I looked to my left, 
my nephew wasn't even there, and I remembered he was sleeping with my sister. So I was like, WTF? I turned the light on, and the arm that got grabbed it like a handprint on it, like you know when you grab your arms hard and you see the red lines on your arm. Yes, it was like that. So it left me shaking, and the time was 3 a.m. from what I know or have heard, 3 a.m. is like the devil's hour. Or like when spirits are active? My door even opened a little bit when I woke up, like when the door of my room opens, it scrapes the carpet on the floor and makes a little noise as if someone had entered the room. I thought to myself that it might be the wind, but I just didn't know. I don't think the house was haunted or anything, but yeah, it was a weird experience. I have told my friends and family, but they simply thought I was crazy and had a dream. They said I probably grabbed myself, but I didn't because my right arm wasn't even there next to it when I woke up. My Ouija board experiences at the age of 14 and up, I have played with a board approximately 15 times over the past 10 years. At 14, I was a bored teenager in a suburban town with nothing better to do. This was something that made us feel alive and daring, and so we sought out the unknown. Just edgy teenager shit. Somewhere around the fifth or sixth time, I witnessed the piece go off the board, point towards a nearby punching bag that was in my friend's dining room at the time, and then witness said punching bag sway back and forth. This was a 300 pound punching bag. There was no wind traveling in the room, nor could it have moved this behemoth bag back and forth like it did. Even skeptics I've mentioned this to said someone using fishing line would struggle greatly to imitate this, not to mention the only other two people present in the house were standing right next to me with their jaws on the floor like mine. People just think I'm a liar, and this never happened, mind you, this isn't my only paranormal experience. My advice to anyone curious about the paranormal is that if you look for it hard enough, you'll find it. I'm lucky I didn't have anything worse happen to me, to be honest. I always told others I've come across doing Ouija boards to be completely mentally prepared, strong, etc., to respect whatever is behind the other side of the board, and to only play with those you trust fully. In Utah, there's a story of the Purple Lady, who haunts the Rio Grande Depot in Salt Lake City. It used to be a train station. The story goes that she was waiting at the train station for her fiancé to return home. When he stepped from his train, she confronted him and asked why he hadn't written her in the many months he'd been gone. It turned into an ugly argument. The fiancé claimed that she'd ripped her engagement ring from her finger and gave it back to him, and in a fit of rage, he flung it onto the tracks. He said she ran after it and jumped onto the tracks to get it, not seeing the oncoming train. She was hit, and she died. The train station is now a cafe, gallery, and history center. People regularly claim to see her there, dressed in purple. Ladies will see her staring at them through the mirror as they wash their hands in the women's restroom. She'll turn on faucets and cause the lights to flicker. People have claimed to hear singing from the bathroom when no one is in there. She'll mess with paintings in the gallery, move things, and allegedly lock workers out of the building. What really changes the story, though, according to a book I read on the haunting, a group of ghost investigators came to the depot and were trying to interview the purple lady. They caught an EVP, and the woman's voice stated clearly, he pushed me. During the summer of 2008, I stayed with an aunt and uncle for a few months because I wasn't getting along with my parents. While staying there, I worked overnights at a local convenience store. During the day, I was mostly alone while my aunt and uncle worked. At this point in my life, I had not experienced anything paranormal and did not believe in ghosts, spirits, or the afterlife. I was 19 and knew everything. However, as soon as I moved in, I was faced with experiences that changed my perspective forever. In the first one, I was alone. It was about 9 a.m., and I had just finished my shift. I was preparing to wind down and get ready for bed. I was alone as usual. Both my aunt and uncle were working, so I had the house to myself. I was sitting in the downstairs living room, eating. Out of seemingly nowhere, I heard what sounded like an adult running through the kitchen, which paralleled the living room and was completely out of view to me, with a bang, and the footsteps went into the den that connected to the kitchen. I bolted up and went to the kitchen to investigate the sound. There was a coffee pot on the floor. That must have been the bang I heard when it hit the floor. I headed towards the den to see who was in there. However, it was empty. There was no way for anyone to have been in the den, and I did not see them. I shrugged it off, figured I was tired, and went to bed. A few weeks later, my alarm woke me up at 9 p.m. for work. I groggily got up and headed towards the bathroom that was directly across my room. However, the door was closed. I could see the light shining from under the door, and I heard the distinct sound of someone sweeping the floor. Swish, swish, swish. It sounded like an old-fashioned straw broom. I found this very odd considering no one besides myself used that bathroom, 
and I couldn't think of why anyone would be sweeping it at 9 p.m. at night. But I patiently waited some time for whoever was in there to finish up. After a few minutes, I couldn't wait any longer because I had to start getting ready for work. I approached the bathroom door, I could still hear the sweeping, and I gently knocked and asked if they were almost done. But to my surprise, the sound abruptly stopped. I opened the door, and no one was there. I brushed this experience off as well and pushed it to the back of my mind. This last experience is the reason I ended up moving out. It was too terrifying to ignore what I knew was happening in that house. My sister stopped by during the day to see me, and she and I were in the back room, hanging out and chatting. The door to the hallway was closed. My aunt and uncle were working, so she and I were the only two people who were home. As we gabbed away, we suddenly heard what sounded like 1920s music coming from downstairs. We froze and fell silent. The music grew louder and louder until it sounded like it was coming from every corner of the house. The music sounded like it was being played on a record player. My sister and I just stared at one another, too terrified to speak. Then we heard what sounded like a party erupting from downstairs. It sounded like 30 or more people were downstairs. Sounds of laughter, talking, and chinaware clinking filled the house. Then what we heard next terrified me. Loud, heavy footsteps started making their way upstairs, where my sister and I were. Boom, boom, boom. It was slow, but purposeful. The party sounds and music had reached a deafening level, but I could still hear those heavy footsteps above all the other sounds. Eventually, I heard the footsteps make it to the second floor. Then they slowly started stomping towards the closed door, and my sister and I sat behind it. When the footsteps reached our door, I leaned up and yanked the door open. When I did, all the noise in the house stopped. The party, the music, the stomping. There was no one behind the door. The hallway was empty, and the house was dead silent again. My sister and I wasted no time racing out of the house and staying outside until our aunt and uncle came home. They didn't believe our story, and I moved out shortly afterwards and never stepped foot in that house again. I live in a rural, very spiritual town in northern Tennessee. My grandmother claims to have a sort of sensitivity, and after her waking up and seeing members of our family an hour to minutes before they died, I tend to believe her. When I was around eight, maybe nine, I was staying at a friend's house. His dad was a very conservative Christian, and his mom was high-strung, having to take care of their grandkids as well as their own after the parents became hooked on drugs, two sons above 20, and two my age-ish. They lived in a wealthy neighborhood right next to a lake and had a big, nice house his dad had built on a hillside with a trampoline, pool, hot tub, and the whole nine yards. It was late. I had fallen asleep on a leather couch in their basement and awoke sometime in the night because it was chilly, and cold and leather do not work very well together when you are trying to sleep on them, so I went up the stairs. I'm going to point out right now that their kitchen slash dining room and their living room were technically the same room, separated by a diagonal wooden threshold piece that differentiated the tile from the hardwood. So I lay on their upstairs couch, and only a few minutes later I heard what sounded like footsteps. It was definitely a younger kid from the speed and sound but I brushed it off as one of the kids using the bathroom. But it kept going. I sat up and looked around. No one. I thought it was weird, but maybe my mind was playing tricks on me. Still, I got up and moved to the couch across the living room, which was facing the kitchen. Surely enough, I heard it again. The pitter-patter of little feet is running through the house. It ran through the kitchen, seemed to stop at the threshold piece, and then back through the kitchen, continuing through the hallway that connected all of the bedrooms. Back and forth, back and forth. By now, I was sort of freaked out, and being young, I was sort of frozen in fear. After a bit, I sat up, and it stopped. I got up, and, as weird as it sounds because it is not my house, I checked the kids' rooms to see if any of them were up, the doors were closed, and they hadn't even stirred. I knew it couldn't be a dog because they only had two Yorkies, and they didn't make the sound I was hearing. So, I laid back down, still freaking out, and it started again back and forth and back and forth, over and over again. I ran through scenarios in my head of what it could be, then I noticed something. It had gone over the threshold and was coming right at me. I held my breath, stunned in fear for what seemed like ages. There was no more sound after that, and soon I fell asleep. I told him about it the next day, and he accepted it, but in that way, a friend accepts something they think their friend is making up. Years pass, I'm either a freshman or a sophomore in high school, and we share a first block class together. One day, he comes in exhausted. I asked him what happened, and he told me that his dad was pulled out of bed in the night and found himself surrounded by what he described as kids in very old-style clothing, talking to the dad later, 
he described it as early 1800s, with sharp teeth all gnashing and biting at him. His dad stayed up for the next four hours, blessing the house to the best of his ability, and he hadn't slept much. I reminded him of my experience all those years ago, and he was like, holy SHT. Oh my God. He turned pale at the memory. To this day, I remember it as vividly as I heard it, and after visiting numerous paranormal hotspots in our locale, each with a story of their own, I still have not ever been as scared as I was then. A couple of summers ago, I went on a camping trip with some friends just outside of Boone, North Carolina. The campsite was privately owned and was an all-around awesome place. It's called Blue Bear, and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who wants good fun camping with no state officials to confiscate their booze. I think it was the second night we were there, we had acquired a half gallon of some evil-looking rum. Me and the two fellas I was camping with had opted for one of the more out-of-the-way primitive sites, about a mile hike down the ridge from the main campsites where everyone else seemed to be staying. We knew no one was close enough to complain about our belligerence and had killed the entire half gallon in no more than 20 to 30 minutes. After that, the night only lasted about two hours. We ran around the woods shirtless, shoeless, and brainless until we all passed out. If it sounds stupid, it's because it was. Lots of fun, though. The next thing I know, I'm awake, wide awake. And I can hear something moving around, probably about 20 yards or so outside of the tent. I feel completely sober and very uneasy. I can feel and hear this thing's presence as it slowly moves through dead leaves and twigs. I'm thinking to myself that this is probably just a deer and maybe, at worst, a black bear. Neither would be much of a problem, as we didn't have any food lying around or anything other than our tent. Then this thing let out a call that was unlike anything I'd ever heard. It's almost impossible to describe what it sounded like, but I can say it was bird-like, like somewhere between a turkey and an owl or something. It was loud as hell, but what scared me about it was its complexity. It sounded like this thing was speaking a full-fledged language. It cried out a few more times, and each time the call was just as complex but completely different. It was extremely alarming and put me in full-on fight-or-flight mode. I sat up and began to build up the courage to go outside and face this creature. Then, just like that, it's morning, and I'm lying on my back, just waking up. Both my buddies are already up and outside of the tent with a fire going. I instantly start losing my SHT and ask if they heard the insane stuff that I had just hours before. Neither of them had, and because I was unable to reproduce the sound at all, I couldn't give them any idea of what it might have been. Fast forward to spring break of the next year, and I'm going camping again, this time deep in the Nantahala National Forest. Which is in the easternmost part of that state and is much more remote than our previous camp. We set up our camp about 8-10 to 10 miles from the entrance to the park. There were no roads in the area and the closest civilization was probably 20 to 30 miles away. This time, I'm with three guys other than myself. There is no drinking involved, and we are all sober. It's the third night of the trip, and it's cold. Our spring break took place in early March, and the nighttime temperatures are more than a few degrees below freezing. Once again, I woke up in the middle of the night. I want to say it was around 2.30 or so in the morning. Well damn if I don't hear the exact same freaky-ass noise coming from just behind me outside of the tent. I'm instantly terrified this time, as I now suspect that some truly strange shit is going on because I know that this is the exact same creature. This time I'm determined to catch a glimpse of it, or something, before I never get another chance. I'm in my tent with my good friend and his brother. I go to wake up my friend, and once again, it's like I passed out or something, and I'm waking up in the morning. Obviously, I burst out of the tent and started ranting about this unknown bird creature that I've now had two encounters with no one knows what I'm talking about and my friend doesn't recall me trying to wake him up at all. I guess I probably could have made this story a little shorter as it is basically about me hearing a weird noise, but let me tell you, this noise was triggering full-on survival instincts and terrifying me on both occasions. I have spent hours on the internet listening to bird calls and other nocturnal noises from the Appalachian area, but I've never been able to find anything that even comes close to the way this thing sounded. Whatever it was, I find it to be an incredible coincidence that I heard it on these two separate occasions, miles and miles apart from each other, and at completely different times of the year. If anyone has any good ideas as to what this could have been, let me know. I was working at a factory, and that night we got out about 4am. On my way out, I noticed the door to our chemical storage, which needs to be temperature regulated, was wide open. Figuring it was the maintenance department, I stuck my head in to check if they were there and called out. There was no response, but I did hear movement from the back as if by a person. So I headed back to check, in case one of them was back there and injured. The entire way back to the back of the room, I hear someone walking. When I reach the back, there's nobody there, 
but I hear a familiar voice in my head, not mine, tell me, we need to go now. And then the room just shifts, and it feels like something massive is in there with me. I immediately flood my body with adrenaline and start walking for the door, with the noise of something following behind me. I got out the door, closed it, and everything went back to normal. I could sense whatever it was on the other side of the door, but it seemed like it was stuck in the room. I don't know what was in there, and the next time I went back, the presence was gone. When I was in middle school, I think my sister had a birthday party one weekend and left with a bunch of her friends and my mom. My brother and I wanted to go to Walmart to buy a few games, back when Walmart carried computer games still, and my dad decided he would take us. My brother and I were in our basement playing video games. The basement was half finished with laundry and a concrete floor on the opposite side. There was a wall that separated a small portion of the basement, which had a door that was used for storage. This is also where the water softener and water heater were. Hardly anyone ever went back there, and it was pretty creepy because it was always dark. The only light had a pull chain on it, so you had to walk in the dark a bit before being able to turn on a light. Anyhow, my brother and I ran up the stairs to get ready after my dad decided he'd entertain us. He was standing at the top of the stairs. Well, my brother and I go to our room, and we are there for a bit when my dad hears something downstairs. He gets a bit upset because he thinks we're wasting time and goes down there to get us. Well, he sees and hears someone shut the laundry door from the top of the stairs and then walks to the portion of the basement that is separated from the rest, a short distance, where all of the utilities are. He walks through the entire basement and finds no one. He actually sits on the stairs after pondering what he just saw. Then my brother and I are ready to go, and we leave. He told my mom but no one else, for years, because he didn't want to scare us kids. Quite a few weird things happened in that house. Doors moving on their own, the cat freaking out, confirming what was happening, disembodied voices in our garage. My husband and I moved into an old house that had a lot of history. It was built by his great-grandfather, and 14 children were born in the house, with five of them dying during infancy or early childhood. Both great-great-grandparents died in the house, and their oldest son, my husband's great-grandfather, gave it to his daughter, my husband's grandmother, as a wedding gift. Well, she sold the house to the family we bought it from. The husband of that family died of a heart attack in the house, and the son of that family fatally shot himself in the house a year later. My husband and I didn't believe it was the paranormal at all when we moved in. Immediately, things started happening. We were hearing and feeling huge bangs and crashes, like heavy furniture falling over, before we even moved the first bits of furniture in. Once we moved in, it continued, and we would hear glass breaking and never find the source of it all. We would wake up to voices at night that would stop as soon as a light was turned on. We came home on more than one occasion with all the lights on and every door and window wide open, and our dogs would absolutely refuse to go in our bedroom. We chalked it all up to coincidence until it reached a point where neither of us could stand to be in the house alone because of the heaviness the house seemed to hold. It all came to a head when I found out I was pregnant with our first child. We were woken in the night to see the outline of a man in our bedroom doorway, and when we turned on the lamp, every water faucet in the house came on, followed by the bathroom mirror falling and shattering all over the bathroom. We sold the house because I wasn't comfortable raising a baby in a house that felt so heavy and angry, and I haven't had any experiences of that magnitude in the nine years since we moved out. I have always had an open mind growing up with the paranormal. My sister and her daughter are sensitive, so growing up in a family that believes in and is open-minded to any possibility. I moved in with my mom in a 120-year-old house. A few months after moving in, my six-year-old son was playing in his very own bedroom around midnight. He comes to the top of the stairs, yells down at me, and tells me he's scared because he saw a dark shadow his height in the upstairs hallway standing in front of the window looking at him. I brushed it off and told him it was probably the tree in the front yard casting a shadow through the window. He is now almost 12, to this day, he still says it was a shadow person. And I believe him. For six years of living in this house, we have had many activities due to the paranormal. Only twice have things gotten scary. Other than that, nothing is fearful in this house. One night, I was sleeping on the couch for no reason at all. I woke up at 2 a.m. I lifted my head and looked straight towards the stairs, and by the other couch, there was a shadowy man standing there staring at me. I could see his broad, muscular arms and shoulders, his ears sticking out, and his bald head. He stood there, watching me sleep. There were no facial features, he was just a pitch black, solid shadow figure. I blinked, and he was gone. I felt no fear with him, no evil. I went back to sleep without being scared or worried. When I was 11 years old, I woke up in the middle of the night and heard something repeatedly running up and down the hallway. 
my mother was the only other person in the house, and I know for a fact that she was asleep at the time. The sound that I heard didn't sound like adult footsteps, it sounded more lightweight and rapid, like that of a scampering toddler. And no, there were no pets in the household. My bedroom was at the dead end of the hallway, and these scampering footsteps would repeatedly run from one end of the hall to the other, but every time they reached the end where my bedroom was situated, there would be a momentary pause in front of my door before resuming. This exact same cycle repeated for about five minutes, and then it just abruptly ceased. I sat upright in my bed, petrified with fear, the entire time this was happening, and I was much too afraid to open the door during or after. I still have no idea what was making that sound, but I got a distinct feeling that whatever it was seemed to be aware that I was aware of its presence. Don't ask me how I know that, it's just one of those things that you can feel but can't rationally explain. The second incident occurred a few years later, when I went down to the basement workshop to retrieve some tools. As I was standing in front of the pegboard, selecting what I required, a female voice aggressively growled directly into my left ear. I immediately went into an adrenaline-fueled panic and dropped everything I had in my hands before sprinting out of the workshop and up the stairs like a frightened cat. Even remembering that now makes me feel an icy chill throughout my entire body, like I did when it happened. That incident was far more traumatic than the previous one. I live in a city in northwestern Canada that is somewhat remote, and the neighborhood I grew up in is situated on land that was once an indigenous village inhabited by the Lhaitli Tena people. Their entire village was burned to the ground in 1913 by British colonizers who wanted to permanently drive them out of the area so they could annex the land. Make of that what you will. I don't know if it's connected in any way, but I thought that it might be worthwhile to mention it. 